After the Second World War, one did create a World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, and by then nobody talked about the question whether both international financial institutions had to live up to international human rights obligations. In the meantime, we are much further in history, and we are now questioning whether the IMF and the World Bank could uh, conduct activities that might violate human rights, or could conduct activities that might not be a real contribution to the realization of human rights. And what I discussed is to what extent both international financial institutions are bound by human rights these days, bound, for instance, by norms which are often called use cogent standards, norms of a peremptory character, and then you talk about torture, but also about the right to self-determination, the right to life, maybe the right to adequate food. Um, and then it's clear that they are bound by these norms, but there is no convention or no treaty saying literally so. So we lawyers, we have to construct an answer, and then we have to, in the end, uh, tell IMF and the World Bank a realistic story on the obligations they are bound by. And my talk constructed a series of arguments on several levels, telling what both organizations would have to do.